This is Sean Avery. This is Kevin Connolly. You're listening to Missing Curfew. Welcome back to a fresh episode of Missing Curfew. Monday's up to one. She's a Monday. She's a Monday. Playoffs continue here. Playoffs continue. We figured why not get a playoff performer, Sean Avery. Guy that's been in the been in the battles. And we got uh, a cameo by former Emmy-nominated actor, owner of APM, our boy Captain Cons. So Captain Cons, whose team managed to sneak in. Yeah, when we did this, when we did this interview last week we did not know if the islanders were going to be in. in fact we thought they were going to be out until pittsburgh shit the bed so cons was not exactly all in on the islanders yeah. in this interview but uh yeah, but he was great he was but great. it would have been an, a, a different cons had they had secured they it before totally. it totally he might have had totally. a little glass of uh he would have been like the islanders bro the islanders bro are beating the yeah. hurricanes 100 bro. totally yeah, he so. was still gun shy because he didn't think Pittsburgh was going to lose those, yeah. one of their last two games. Yeah, so they're they're in a battle. You know, Mondays this is Monday here. They've been in a nice little battle here this weekend. Yeah, it's been a good uh, good hard series for them. Yeah. So anyway, anyways, thanks to these boys. Yeah. Uh, Aves is great in this one. Cons is Captain Cons. So enjoy coming at you here from uh, the boys at APM Aves and Captain Cons. Well, welcome back to Mister Curfew Up Dog, fella. We got him. We got him. We got a couple of them here. This yeah. is a nice. Uh, from the new quick shift, I believe it's just a, we'll get we'll ask him, but it's just a it's just a YouTube kind of sensation. I think is what it is. Yeah, it is right. right the clips off the are hop, fucking yeah. gold. The clips are gold. So. Yeah, it is. It's like rock 'em sock 'em. It's a new <laughs> version of rock 'em sock 'em. It makes me miss sitting on the bench. That I just want to be like sitting beside the guy, like fuck, <laughs> fella. Look at that row twenty seven there. See ups. You see her ups. Yeah, but pass anyways, me that water bottle. Uh, from Action Park Media, the legend Sean Avery and the captain Kevin Connolly. Gentlemen, what's happening, boys? Thanks, uh, thanks for having us. I'd like to address one thing. Um, Blue light is, is, is a Canadian staple. If you're a junior hockey player, you drink blue light, right? On the bus coming you're back from K-Town. Right. Hey, Aves on the bus so coming back hey, from K-Town. Hey, by the way, Aves, we talk about the pinup girls. Remember like the, the posters your dad used to have in the garage you shoot pucks <laughs> off of, like Pamela Anderson and those one-piece like Labatt blue <laughs> fucking bikinis? Yeah. The Toronto we're bringing them the back. Cal- we're Toronto Calgary Sun. Sun. And the Calgary Sun had a page three girl, I think, too. That's right. I had the sunshine a, I had those girl. Posters. I had those posters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not your dad. I had them. <laughs> uh, you could be my dad then, Collins. Yeah. I could possibly be your dad. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you were talking about Kevin uh, and the, the Easter egg hunt. Uh, a funny thing happened a couple of weeks ago. Kevin came in and he said, I was rummaging, rummaging through a drawer and I found this envelope. And... <laughs> I don't know. I guess he went to a party a long time ago. Kevin goes to big parties, important parties, and they were handing out Bitcoin. And he had this, uh, he found he found Bitcoin. A Bitcoin like, card that was in my drawer for 11 years. Wow. That they gave to him at well, the party. Do you know what the, what's that? We were Did just, it have the key code to it? We were just talking we were Bitcoin just talking before Bitcoin this Bitcoin today. Before so, so it had yeah. the password to it? Did you log on to the wallet? How much was we it? We logged on we, and for whatever, for a couple hours, it was like, who knows? In that year, maybe there's 10 on there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the, but it, at the worst, there's one Bitcoin, right? One would think. So Aves, of course, knows somebody in the Bitcoin world and he gets to, and there was $62. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so we went from like, wow, man, this could be, what What if there's a thousand? I mean, it, I went from like possible retirement, immediate retirement into stock that they said, you know, at least you could get a bottle of Johnny Black with it. Okay, thanks, <laughs> so it gave you a Dogecoin. It was a Dogecoin. It wasn't yeah, yeah. exactly a Bitcoin. Dude, it, was, it was a dagger because I <laughs> thought in a disaster, it's at least one Bitcoin. But it was like 1.025% of a Bitcoin. You but went, you you went know from- what, you, what you can find in the cushions and, and underneath a crevice. You just never <laughs> oh. know. You never know. Cause you thought you were just going to throw the keys to the APM right to stock tip and say, here you go, stock tip. It's all yours, buddy. I'm, I'm out of he here. Was hating. He was hating on it. He was happy there was nothing on there. I always, uh, it, it was always interesting. If you guys can help me understand this, like why in the NHL, the trainers in the Ambien after the games walking up and down the plane. Like, why didn't we all just get our own prescriptions for Ambien like adults? Do you remember that? What would they do? They would just divvy them well, out, like walk through the aisle. It was you. certain teams that you played on, right? Yeah. Like in Vancouver, we, we had to get our own prescription names. Now, earlier oh, in my career in Tampa, probably not in Anaheim, probably not. They just go up to the, doc, the, the guy in the plane and say, hey, give me an Ambo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was oh, so it was muscle cool relax. Days. It was a muscle relaxer and an ambo. It's called the perfect storm. Yeah. <laughs> that would put yeah. you right down after after a game. 
Yeah. I could use one of those on Easter. Yeah. After, the, after the Easter egg hunt coming up the live show in Phoenix. I might have been the team doctor the one year. I'm not going to lie, boys. I had a little pharmacy going there at the back of the pool. Well, I'm not going to lie. I'll tell you why. Right by the poker table. I was like, what do you think, fella? Hey, good game right there. Go, yeah, totally. I'll tell you why they never allowed the, the prescription in your own bottle is because one of those fins would grab you and steal the whole thing and eat, <laughs> and eat them like a gargoyle one night and just go off fucking completely off the rails. Those guys would go... Yeah, yeah there's, on the there's nothing better than the first time you see one of your Finnish teammates get drunk <laughs> because it's like a Russian, a Czech, a Canadian, and uh, I don't know what else, but all Icelandic. combined into one. Man, those guys go hard. They do. Fucking Vikings, is that's why. I know. And, like, uh, Kipper and this Rantanen kid, we were playing some clips the other day. Well, we actually didn't get to play the clip because yeah, we wanted to. Scotty clipped the wrong clip, but uh, this kid's a scorer. Oh, yeah. Kids, a score, boy. What do you guys think? Dude, you there, like was, there was Aves. There was two kids. When I had to go back down to the jungle there after being in the show for whatever nine, ten years, I had to go back down to the jungle. The jungle. I, I played against Dreisaitl in Bakersfield on the faceoff. I'm like, hey, you're in the wrong fucking league. What are you doing here, buddy? He was gone next week, and then I played Ranton and the year before he was in San Antonio. I'm like, fella, you're in the wrong league too. So those are the two guys that right away at a young age, Aves. I was like, this he guy's a Randy was so strong at 20 years old. It was crazy. Do you remember at the all-star game when we were, we were downstairs, whatever, near the bench and he came out like in his, in his ginch yeah. taping a stick, how big his fucking ass was. Yeah. He's a, the guy's he a, he's a monster Aves. It's like, yeah. good luck going in. It's like playing. A, I mean, I don't even know. Bobby Holik. Like who yeah. was just a big ass Bobby like Holique guy that beast. goes, goes in the I, corner. You're just like, ah, just take the puck. I don't need to. How ugly hey, was what's Bobby Holik? What's a ginch? Gitch. 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 What's a ginch? <laughs> it's what you're wearing out of those blue slacks. What do you got under there, buddy? That'd be your gitch. What are you rocking tonight? Right, I get you. I get what you're saying. It's yeah, like yeah, your it's, first layer. Yeah, it's it's first, first layer. layer. So okay. when you put the cold gear on on the golf course, you've got gitch underneath. Yeah. That's right. I, by the way, I'm a big fan. Big fan of the gitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, Aves, like, yeah, did you, like, Aves, you seem like a guy that might have had his own gitch. Did you have, like, when you played for the Rangers, did you have, like, your own gitch, or did you wear New York Rangers approved gitch? Or I think you had, like, some fashion designer probably have your own gitch, huh? I, I didn't like the uh, shade of blue on our gitch and Nike wore this. Uh, it was the early days of the dry fit uh, era and Nike had a light blue and uh, I had somebody at Nike anyways, hook me up. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't wear the official one. I, I, I kind of, I just wanted that little bit of, uh, I wanted some contrast yeah. between, you know, that t-shirt underneath. And by the way, guys that never wore t-shirts under their gear, it's like, a guy wearing not not wearing socks and his skates. Yeah. I could never understand it. Oh, it's that's so like gross. Shanny would do that. So Sh crazy. Shanny never wear. Shanny would never wear. Like you'd even see it through his jersey. You're like, guy, you even wearing it shoulder pads. Wants. Yeah, but it, but Shanny. imagine how uncomfortable that is, right? <laughs> You ever play with a guy that didn't play Buddy, wear socks? I played with a guy in the jungle that would go just buck naked and cu and cup right on the ball sack. <laughs> Aves, not even the underjock. Remember, you used to have the old underjock. Yeah. He would go oh, yeah. just jock. Here we go. Let's play That's in the free jungle. Ball, buddy. Free, ball. free ball. When you're, you, you know, three and three, your underwear. How stinky is that? Oh thing, man, I can't remember his name, but he was. I think he's 50, a Western Canada guy. Maybe fifty percent of the time, right now, currently today, I still wear inner jocks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just to an oh, audition yeah. or whatever. You're like, I'll throw the inner jock on here. What? <laughs> I, I feel athletic. He's a big jujitsu guy now. It I, gets jiu the I always have. I always have the inner jock on. But you guys don't wear one when you golf. You need like you a spatula to get your no, balls off fuck. the side of your leg. Though. Aves, I've been playing so bad. I might throw the inner jock on. I might throw it on this Friday. Where do I no get one's a, safe out there? I where, won't be able to find one to fit my waist. Though, Aves, where do I get a one that's going to get around my waist? I, nowadays? I feel like nobody knows what an inner jock is except hockey players. Like football players, they don't wear them baseball guys no they cons must. do you know what an inner jock you know what we're talking about i do not i do not we do not wear those at the men's mar vista roller on wednesday night <laughs> it's a piece of jocks. mesh it's a uh, with two straps that basically it's a it's a it's a ball hammock with yeah. with an open ass yeah okay <laughs> oh i think i saw that in young blood right? it's a banana you know hammock young blood, right? which they're remaking right now i i believe no way they are yeah they are uh the kid that's directing it is a is a kid that played hockey. He's a black guy that played for played with Weeks and and he played minor hockey growing up in Toronto, and then he went on to to art school and and now he's in the arts and he's a director and he's remaking it, but he's playing the character also. Oh, cool! Uh, I like it. Yeah. Well, there, so, is there going to be a lot of do, do you know? Is the, is it the I've format the a lot of hockey? Is there going to be a lot of hockey like on ice stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the original Youngblood is so good. Why would yeah. you touch it? 
Yeah. To that, me, that's what that's, my reaction that's why was. I it was say, just, like, don't, don't touch some it. Some of these things, like, don't touch. Okay. You know what I mean? And and don't try and flip the script on it. I hope it's great. I, I love movies. We love movies. We love movies. Give me something <laughs> that makes me feel something. But but I don't know. My only problem with Youngblood is that I got to imagine that the Mustangs could have picked up Youngblood and Racky and just ran through. I mean, come on. They couldn't have squeezed both those guys under the roster? Well, there's a maybe there's no there's cap back then. Yeah, there's no, no salary cap back yeah, then. Gary Bettman didn't have a job back then. Get Racky and Youngblood, and you, you don't lose a game. Listen, I'm not lacking, I'm not letting Racky leave town. I'm finding a way if he's on my squad. He's, if, this guy, if, you just got, got him. You can't let him go anywhere else. Big shoes to yeah. fill for Rob Lowe, though. Who's yeah. going to come oh. in there and be yeah, right? Like big shoes and, and the and the coach. I mean, I'll say this right now: the greatest sex scene ever in movie history is Youngblood. <sighs> You tea can, with Miss McGill. I don't know. I mean, come on, bro. What are you talking about? Tea with Miss McGill. Before? Two days in the valley with Charlize Theron. Nine and a half weeks. I mean, <laughs> Monster Ball with Halle Berry. Has nothing. All great choices. All great choices. But when you pull the mattress off the bed onto the floor so it doesn't make noise, <laughs> you're dialing it up a notch. That's a high level it's, move. That saves uh, the knees. <laughs> I used to take the sheets off the mattress so it didn't make a mess, but I, I always left the mattress on the on the bed frame. <laughs> well, you didn't have a billet at yeah. that point. Maybe you did. Hey, you know, you know, my, I I did have a billet. You know, my old billet. Uh, we don't need to go down this. But remember Neil Joy Naves? Uh, of course, the, yeah. one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest men billets. to ever. No, not only billets, but like shepherd so many NHL careers. Um, you know, took care of so many guys. Uh, let us run fucking wild, but in a way that was so controlled and 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 good, good for the game. Like, you know, Canadian billets are 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 special people. All right, I've had billets that that locked food in the in the cupboards. Uh, uh, Chris Menard, you remember Chris Menard? Yeah, I do. Played. Yeah. Remember the Kugel fight when he when he skated away from Kugel? Yeah, Full I sure skate. do. Anyways, uh, billets are incredible. Neil Joint, Sarah, Sarah just uh, uh, texted me. One of the best families in in Canadian junior hockey. What a sure. cook too, by the way, huh, Aves? I, I mean, his cooking was. I mean, guys would go. Yeah, he that separates a, a good. That, that's what money maker right there. Yeah, this guy cook. was a Neil's a Michelin star cook. Yeah, the best soup you've ever had, and it didn't matter what time you came home. You could have been on a three day bender and rolled in at like four a.m. All right, prime burglary time. Neil would get up and he would prepare you a meal, and it didn't matter who you had with you, guy, girl. Fucking who <laughs> walked in with Mav. <laughs> yeah. Mav, God. Oh, I love Mav. God bless him. God bless him. All right. Uh, where do we want to start here? This is a great little introduction here, boys. But let's let's go jujitsu because a couple weeks ago, Aves on missing curfew, up dog at said we were talking about you and, and go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. no, yeah. I just so uh, uh, it's it's impressive. I always knew you like to grapple. <laughs> I mean, you try, you chase me around the ice fucking more than once, but uh, bring bring it. What, what have you been doing? What's this like form of jujitsu that you've been doing? Is, and are you competing for Team Canada? Because those those shorts, although they were tight, it's nice to see that little Canadian logo on the back there. So so the uh, the jujitsu. I'm a no gi guy, not a gi. The gi is those white things that you know, uh, Cobra Kai karate style kid. karate, karate kid. Yeah, uh, I've transitioned to to no gi. Uh, the, the the grappling clothes need to be tight so that you can't grab anything. So I agree they are they're tight, you know. Uh good or bad, they're tight. Anyways, I walked into a uh a class by myself probably six months ago, and uh I got hooked by the culture, I got hooked by the art form of it, and I got hooked by the ability to choke another person out with your hands using their clothes or just your you know your forearm it, it's it's exhilarating gentlemen <laughs> he's also pretty zen since then really yeah you yeah. got like a martial arts vibe yeah yeah oh. he says i'm not mad i'm a martial artist yeah i mean nothing nothing sets me off anymore well yeah, it's impressive yeah <laughs> very it, little sets you off very Don't little think- it's still there. It could happen. You could get set off. But very, for very little. And I'll tell you, it's it's all about uh, Shane. You'll never go on a golf course again once you get hooked in this because <laughs> it is. You know, we are animals. We have an animalistic. We were warriors, uh, uh, and that is hard to get out of your DNA. This is a beautiful sport because you know it's so humbling. You, you all you have to do is just tap, and you're done. 
right? And then you get to get up and you go as hard as you want again. And it's the repetition of, of uh, it, it, it's so much fun. It, he wants Tom Hardy. He I'm wants to find Tom, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy wow. and he to fight Tom Hardy. Yeah. Pay-per-view. Let's Avery versus happen. Hardy, yeah. 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 Also, he, Avery's, Avery's looking for him. Yeah. But it's yeah. like dancing, Aves. Do you feel like at times you're dancing out there with the, the, these guys? And like, what's your record right now, even? Uh, oh, I, I am. Done. Yes, I am undefeated. But but here, what you got to understand, guys, is the competition world <laughs> is very interesting because they're not professionals. No one's a professional. So like my first tournament, which I did in a gi, and I was laughing on the drive over going, who's the poor bastard, the dentist from Encino that is going to come up against me in my first ever <laughs> jujitsu match. And, you know, these guys are, are, I love them so much because I think you're out of your fucking mind. Like I am a, I am a killer right now and I'm going to kill. And these guys just go in there and that's the beauty of it is you don't know who you're going to get. Uh, and, and I'm going to get a killer at some point. And I relish the day when I can be in that situation and be humble. You know what I mean? I'm not afraid to lose. I'm not afraid to lose. The one clip I did see, you came out of the gates fucking hot. You took about three hard strides at the guy. And before you knew (laughs) it, he he was in one. And I want to ask you, I saw on your social media, you said something about no soft rolling going on here. No soft rolling. Does that mean like we're not fucking around? Like once you get in here to look out or what? Yeah, so there's a lot of gyms. There's two types of gyms. There's gyms with dogs and there's gyms with, uh, we'll call them cats, but cats are flow rollers. So what they do is they flow, right? They never get to a point where you lock a submission. Uh, like when we when we train, we spar, which is every day, twice a day. Uh, uh, we fucking, if you don't tap, I'm going to choke you out. Like, you're going to lose consciousness. So it's your responsibility to tap. Flow rollers are guys that we have some friends of Beverly Hills gym. There's gyms all over the country that uh, they flow roll. They do this like uh, it's like a uh, uh, it's like avatar without the finishes, you know, and, <laughs> but you can get belts and you can still be a guy with a blue belt. It's more a of a workout belt. or an exercise yeah. it's a calorie burn as opposed to actually trying to choke your guy out. It's like get a good sweat in. But yeah. John's trying to choke people out. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Just and he tries, he does it in the office, which is brutal because oh. like he comes in and tries a new move on, on guys. He yeah. had me in the carpet. And I'm like, Sean, get, please let go of my arm. He's you, you know, what's crazy is, is that if a guy and no hockey player ever has really been, I don't know any, I didn't play with ever any guy that was like, oh, yeah, I do jujitsu, but wrist locks yeah like i could choke a, a person with a jersey now in a fight in a hockey fight if Funny. we squared off and and i got your jersey because the jerseys won't rip and a cross collar choke i'll choke a guy out standing up dude that's my, that my next question that. i could see that at the winter class yeah, right? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that'll be Ben would love that for the fuck that'd be good for the for the winter class. Aves, i was just gonna ask you like jujitsu and, and hockey fighting with all the gra- like what you just said it, it goes hand in hand very similar very very similar there's a lot of uh, uh similarities you and got to imagine that some of these younger guys are tinkering with it they have to be i haven't uh, have you ever heard of a guy you ever uh, played with a guy no i mean look I, our buddies out here do a, do some jujitsu ever not but i've never heard a guy that played hockey doing jujitsu no never yeah it's it's very hard on the body yeah, like, i was I gonna say up dogs look, can, can up dog sign up do you no, got a two what? for one deal or something up he wants to get up there and roll around my right bit. shoulder is so would be so <laughs> in one like the biceps hanging off by a thread like I, I don't know at what positions are you in that you're just like okay that's the old shoulder injury i had back in detroit that's not feeling too right, good right there but you know what's gonna happen you're just gonna blow right through it and oh Oppie, you'd be dangerous because yeah. you're the the Lean. lankiness and and you got some length to you ob you would fuck guys up <laughs> <laughs> you would fuck guys up i'm telling both of you you guys would never golf again maybe occasionally yeah. but, oh, but it's a bold statement i've been you yeah. guys play a lot of golf I've been and, a human and ATM OB, lately. i've lost i walked into the gym i was like 216 which is heavy okay i was fucking heavy i mean I, I, I'm a lean, mean fighting machine today. He's ready right for summer. Does your body, does, <laughs> hey, Aves, I want to ask you, like, because honestly, bro, all, all my like goal in, and that my day is to feel good, right? I swim now. I swim every yeah. morning. I go for walks. I play pickleball. That's what I do. So oh, I just don't want to be sore. Guy. When you do jujitsu the next day, how you feeling? Like, are you like fucking like after a game, after a playoff game, after a game 50? How you feeling? Yeah. Uh, 
all of the above. Yeah, yeah. But you're, but you're so clear. You know, you have this like clarity and and hunger to feel that again immediately because it's this endorphin dump. It's it's like golf. Golf seems to me like too frustrating. Like how how often do you leave it around and you go, I feel fucking great. You know <laughs> Never. I mean? This guy's always, he's in the fucking sixty yards by me and taking my money. We've almost it's almost ruined our relationship slash business fucking <laughs> adventures here. No, Ever I, since Sean started doing jujitsu, he's become the head of HR at Action Park Meal. Wow. There's a dust up. Sean calls everybody separate. Here's him out. Comes with a solution. All right, Kev, you probably could have been a little bit better saying this. Think you should call and say you're sorry. I'm like, all right, Aves, did you talk to him? All right, I'll call. What I so he's now running uh human resources here. It, it's almost who knew? It's almost embarrassing how hard I'm hitting the drum. Like prison reform? You want prison reform? Teach them all jujitsu. Yeah. I swear to God. Choke the guards out. <laughs> I'm telling you, it would be the most peaceful prison. All you'd have is these prisoners just rolling, trying to kill each other on the mats. They wouldn't be focused on anything. They don't need shanks. It's no so <laughs> fucking beautiful. It's yeah, beautiful. choke up the guards. And, and you know, I, I do want to say one thing about this. I, I I don't know how I got on it, but my my uh, the algorithm now, sending me videos of these kids, like eight year old, 10 year old kids in Canada with their skills coaches and doing all these oh, fuck. fucking drills on their own and stuff. Like it's getting a little out of control no? Do yeah. you guys? Oh, the hockey. Yeah, it, was, yeah. It, it really is, bro. And how much it's costing these poor families up, you know, for your kid to play hockey. Like it was just probably expensive when we played, but hey, kids are paying to play junior B hockey now for like, like tier two back in Ontario, Pickering Panthers, or whatever, they gotta pay to play that shit now, Apes. Why? Who? I don't Who fuck I have no idea. But they got like the Cobra Cougars, they gotta pay to play junior hockey. Yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah. So Aves, we got a buddy in uh in Aspen. His name's Sheldon. He's from he's actually an Alberta guy. Um, self made, went down valley in Aspen to like a place where, you know, a lot of the families are there, mixed race. They're not like the Aspen families. There's no politics there. He he built this outdoor rink for these kids and started a program, Colorado Extreme. And these kids are out there all damn day. And he supplied the skates and sticks and everything. He's got th over 300 kids in their school. They have gone from last year, like these kids just learning how to skate. They just go out and they can't get them off the ice. And now these kids are going and winning like the state championship in Colorado. They're doing it the old school way. Just allowing these kids to go out and like play. They're not like... Nothing's right. like fucking, oh, it's going to be, you know, you're going to sit in the classroom f today and then you can't go play baseball after you're just going to play hockey, hockey, hockey. It's, it's such a better way to do it organically. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing these kids thrive and have fun doing it. It can't be fun doing what these little yeah, creatures you know, are doing. Skills now. coaches and stuff. Too much pressure, too, too much pressure. Like, uh, uh, you know, any job that probably at some point when you walked into an audition or you walk into a meeting you go fuck it <laughs> i'm going right? old school i'm going rocky four hey cards i'm going rocky right, four rocky i'm going five. old school yeah. rocky five. Right isn't back. that always the best well like, when you just don't well that's when you get the job you know yeah. yeah right yeah right when you're loose when you don't have that loose. pressure on you like washington was last night loose yeah uh -huh. yeah loose I, I, was, I almost took washington i knew they're gonna beat your honors we're gonna get some hockey but last acting thing speaking about being loose i'm a big fan of everything that goes on at action park media Great content coming out of there. Uh, what happened with the role, Aves? You went up against the veteran Kevin Connolly in the same role. Like, walk me through it. You got to be intimidated by Kevin Connolly, Emmy-nominated actor. Uh, what were you thinking? Well, well, talk me well, through it, bro. Yeah, I mean, OG in the game. Okay, first of all. I mean, a weird arm bar and then forced my face into the carpet. I was like, all right, I'm, uh, I'm tapping. Whatever the version of tapping is, I'm doing it. Hey, listen. Okay. It, this carpet's dirty. It Get was, my face off the carpet. It was a serendipitous moment because I walked in and, and I always like to show my auditions to Kevin because I, I want notes, right? Like, yeah, I could have, there was a moment there. Maybe I missed a moment or maybe I hit a moment. Um. I mean, we like watch tape yeah. of the auditions, yeah. right? Notes of what he could do better next time, or thoughts that I have, or what have you. Yeah, yeah. So I walked in, and and when I see Kevin has audition pages in front of him, I get very excited because he doesn't like to. Uh, it takes a lot for Kev to audition now. Whatever. <laughs> Sean and I went head to head on an audition. So we, same role. I yeah. saw that he had the pages that I had, and I went, "Holy fuck! <laughs> this, is, this is amazing!" Right from an artistic standpoint. 
Kev went into killer mode right away and started playing psychological warfare. I sent him a picture of me because it's like a 70s hotel. And I put in my girl's hair extensions and I put on a pair of sunglasses and a and a and a feather coat. And I sent the picture to Sean thinking like Sean's like, wow, he's going to wear this on his audition. Of course, I was not going to wear that, but I was trying to get in his head a little bit. I love it. And and by the way, I thought that that your choices would have been totally (laughs) acceptable. I mean, it's a wild role. It's a wild role. Yeah, it's it's called cocaine uh, cocaine. hotel, cocaine hotel, hotel, hotel. Yeah. Yeah. And like Hunter S. Thompson was in a scene. Anyways, he didn't do it that way, but he did do it. uh, You you what's beautiful is like I saw Kev make a choice and he made a choice that was representative Not of the right choice. Obviously, <laughs> well, you don't know that you don't know that you made a choice that represented the character that that you had sort of played Pull the trigger on it. You gotta you gotta yeah. you gotta commit to one thing. Yeah, right. So. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be afraid at this point. Um, Oh, Sean is fearless. Bro. Yeah, I know. He I know. He's out there and he fires auditions and he's just, it's a numbers game and something's going to hit for him soon. So. Yeah, I hope. I hope. I love I that hope. you do that. So, so, so and, and just to touch back on that, but is that what separates like two quality actors and guys going in to get that role is how artistic they treat that fucking moment where they got to deliver that one, you know? And and then you know how what? did it go? Well, what's the like? Well, what's the fallback? Did you guys any of you get it? Did we get it? Here, see, see, don't give him the jaded response. I'm not giving him the jaded It's a numbers response. game, it, and it depends. It's, no, you it's, never it, know. it's so specific, right? Like, so, it, let's say ten guys. It, let's say you numbered the quality of the the auditions from one to ten on a scoring basis. The guy that finished uh, fifth in the standings might get the role because he's just more right for the job. So Fucking it's not about the number that you throw up. It's about You've got to throw up a number, you land on the board. So it might be the sixth best guy that gets the role, but he's the guy. And then you think, well, we can work with him and make him the number one guy. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's not always about the quality. You could go, man, I fucking murdered that audition and not get it because you're not the guy. Very simple. Yeah. You know what's funny? Here's how I'll I'll say, uh, uh, analyze this whole situation. I think uh, as uh, because of our, f- our, our, our previous life, right, being hockey players, we're not afraid of being told that we're doing something wrong. That almost just like fuels us, right? So yeah. this whole process, every time I get a no, I get excited because I'm like, I, I got to fucking lean into the next one even more. And it's this escalation of uh, you can just tell us like that was bullshit. You can't fucking make that play anymore. And we're kind of hardwired. Maybe you have to tell us two or three times, but it won't really take longer than that. Because we also know that we have consequences. Like, what But in the acting game, you can't necessarily say, I'm picking up the team, I'm putting them on my back, and I'm taking them. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. At a certain point, you know, I had an agent tell me a long time ago, listen, Kev, you're not going to be in the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar story either. Catch my drift. <laughs> you know, you're if you're not right for the role, you're not right for the role. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can't will it to happen. You can't get extra sleep. You're the guy or you're not the guy. No, but I so think, I'm trying to get Sean to understand. No, one day he's going to walk in and be just so painfully right for something that you'll be the guy. Yeah. And you know what? I think I just had a moment of understanding in the sense that at least it. I, I, I'm just going to keep like that moment is going to come no matter what, because I'm not going to stop. No, you're not. Like Collins. nothing is going to stop. <laughs> Collins, could you, or maybe Aves too, right? Could either one of you play Conor McGregor in the Conor McGregor story? Like Aves, you could maybe pull off Conor McGregor. Couldn't you like, I look at both you guys. And I was, I, is that something that could maybe someday happen or would he act I mean, himself? I mean, would he McGregor's, act himself? Well, Connor's playing Connor. Yeah. Uh, uh, Roadhouse. Roadhouse. And Roadhouse. Yeah. Yeah. So, l- l- uh, I don't like my odds for that role, bro. No, I, I like my odds. What, you're an Irish guy. What, what? I like my odds of being on on a set with Kevin at some point, and it's just going to be because like there's levels to this game. You know what I mean? And and I ask him and sometimes we get like I've I've been lucky enough to be on set with some of the some of the guys that are are their levels high, right? He's been on a lot of sets with a lot of guys that their level is high. You just know the difference, right? right? You just feel it. Oh, we're going to play together one day. I'm going to set you up, bro. I'm going to be like dry sidle. <laughs> yeah. Team yeah, there's sidle no salary cap fucking. either in that world. That's nice. <laughs> no salary <laughs> cap. No. Although there's hey, no minors hey, either. It's one like, of the things we were about. talking about, what, is, <clears throat> what do you guys think dry sidle looks like on another team? Really, put, really, put fucking, the, really fucking good. Put him on the wings. He, does, he right? wears number 13. Looks like, looks like Datsu. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, I think Dry Still, to answer your, Kevin, answer your question, Cods, wherever team he goes to, obviously he's a legit number one player and he makes everyone a better around him, right? You want to throw yeah. him on, well, I don't know, pick a team, your Islanders, for example, right? I mean, yeah. he, he's going to go in there and, and he's still going to get 100 points where Bor Horvat goes in there and has seven goals. You see what I'm saying? What do you guys right, so. it, what do you guys like better? You like when McDavid like fucking turns up with the puck and does something crazy, or do you like when uh Dreisaitl gets pissed off and just starts manhandling kids like uh, he's Dreisaitl's game to me is man, like I don't think McDavid is a hundred and fifty point player without Dreisaitl. I mean, I, I just don't think that's I think he's he much closer to the cooch, like he's in the one thirties. But that's a 20, 30 point swing. Um, Dry Seidel's game, you know, the way that he moves the puck and how strong he is. Like, I would take Dry Seidel over uh, uh, who's the kid in Toronto with Martin? the ugly mustache? Matthews. Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews. If you could just pick one or two right now to start a team, who do you take? Fuck, that's such a great question. No, I take Dry Seidel. Dry Seidel 100%. Yeah. Yeah. What about Dry Seidel or McKinnon? I'd take Dry Seidel. Yeah, I would too. I take McKinnon. Really? So would I. Yeah, I would take McKinnon. Just that's such a tough one too, though. That that's rich people problems. But I would take. <laughs> I Nate, say I mean, what, first yeah. world problems. Well, for what sure. McKinnon's doing right now, Aves, and, and maybe this is because I've been on the right side of this Avalanche run. Thank God, I was in such a hole gambling, but the Avs have pulled me out of it here. But what he's done the last three months to two and a half months, and Rantanen as well. I mean, it's been put. You talk about Kev. You can't do it in acting. He's put the Avalanche on his back and said, "Let's go, right. fellas." Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty. Of, yeah, that is the beauty of the sport, which is why, you know, Edmonton's dangerous because you're going to get a, a, a dry sidle. He's going to win around. McDavid's going to win around. One of those two's got the ability to win another round. Now you're in the finals, you know, in this game, like game breakers can, can be that difference, right? Whether it's a goaltender, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, Colorado looks good lately, man. You know, they're getting hot at the right time. Yeah. I, I haven't been this excited about a playoff run in a minute. Yeah. Are you going to get in? Is your team going to get in, though, is the question. Are they going to get in, cons? So they got to win tomorrow night. But no questions asked. They got to win. And then either Pittsburgh or Florida has to lose. If either one of those teams loses, the honors are in. So they don't control their own destiny anymore, which is tough. Can we address the Barzell situation? Because this has been going on for weeks. Like, it, it, you got to play. Fuck, like, I was I just going to say that. He's going to be ready for the playoffs, or can he play the final two games? Because if you don't play the final game, you're not in the playoffs. Where is he? I was right. just I mean, going to say that. That's the point. I mean, you know, who knows? But, I mean, the other thing we talked about when Kucherov went on that run a couple years ago. But, you know, Tampa was in already right so they didn't need that extra push the islanders needed barzell down this stretch and if he was healthy and you know he's a gamer all right so we're if he was ready to go he would go okay you know? all right yeah I, I would like to i think you he... gotta get out there i love barzell he's got sick hair he's got sick style he's a national leaguer but i i'm with aves you gotta get out there there's gotta there. be something going on it's like what what is it I, it's not. It's, he's got a lower body body injury. Yeah, hurt, so it's right? probably it's like a point. groin or something. Hey, fucking to tape that thing. Unless on he can't put there. his cup on because his cock's <laughs> falling off from fucking everyone. He better be out there I, if you're asking me. I, I right? try to imagine he's dying to get out there. I don't know. I would. I would guess. I, I, I I've been told that. Uh, well, I I won't go there. I won't go there. So I heard Barzell does well for himself. Yeah, yeah. you would think he does yeah. well for himself. I Aves. I mean, he he's got to be taking advantage of every situation he can get. Right. I, I, there's not many advantages in situations when lose your GM yeah. though. Just remember that. Yeah, that's true. Aves, what do we, uh, now that we're on it, East coast devils Rangers, but what are you thinking? I, I've actually, the devil's been my little long, uh, my dark horse here for the last yeah. little push. Let me tee it up. Let me tee it up. Aves. He's all over the devils. Yeah. I'm all over the Rangers. Aves. I hate the devils fans. They're all mutants. <laughs> They've been ripping me all year. They're all mutants. So yeah, take it from there, buddy. But these devils fans, I'm telling you, they're mutants. So first of all, what it what it what I'll say is uh what a great series, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your your subway, you're 20 minutes from both ranks, either direction, from the five boroughs. Uh the rock is a dump unless the Rangers play there. Now, I haven't seen the games there recently, but the Devils scare me. The Devils scare me, and that is a huge matchup because it's a hot ticket. Listen, New York, <laughs> the thing that makes me nervous, it, it's it's a hot ticket. It's a hot ticket. And I'd have to go back for one of those games. Uh, the thing that ticket. makes me nervous about New York is their back end. 
Their back end makes me nervous. Uh, the Miller kid, he's come into his own. He's had a good second mm-hmm. half. Truba is is not a he's not a scary uh, uh, he's not he's not headman. I mean, I, I don't know about that back end. And Jersey is fucking good. They are good, man. Yeah, this Jack Hughes kid is something else. Huh? Yeah, he is. And they picked what? up the younger brother for the run. Interesting. Yeah, they just signed him out of college. I think he was at Michigan. Ave, let's stay with the with the back end because you're bang on about Conjure Miller. And the <clears throat> the thing is, AFC makes too many critical little mistakes where he'll make a yeah. bad pass or he's out yeah. of position. And he's so freak. He's such a freak athlete that his skating and his length and it's just his ability gets him back in position. But you're bang on about Miller. He makes too many little mistakes in his own zone with the puck that you're like, fella, in a seven game series. That could be the difference. Yeah, and also, like, we haven't seen anyone turn the heat up on Fox, right? So if up be, if it's me or you and, and we're going into that series, the directive is lay the fucking body on this kid as much as you can, as early as you can. Like, I don't care what we're doing, but we're dumping it in and we're just going to pound this kid into the fucking ice. Totally. Are yeah, they going to play that way? Do teams play that way anymore? I don't know. But if Fox has the ability to just freewheel, you're going to be in trouble. But you can win these games if you crank it up. And we see the guys, everyone's fighting now. The intensity is 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 high uh, among the league, in my opinion, which is a good sign. And they got guys to do that. They got Miles Wood, who I absolutely yeah. love. Yeah, it's you a guys good fuck. Line. Curtis Lazar. That kid can get on the four check. So they do have guys that can do that, Aves. And that, if I was Lindy Ruff and the coaching staff, that would be at the, you know, they used to do the playoff rundown. Yep. And that would be at the top. Fucking yep. dump it in and get on them right away. But look at yeah, their three lines. They're through that. Sorry, Aves, but they're, the Devils' three lines are they're stacked. Like Timo Myers playing. Uh, Timo Myers on the third line. The guy's a fucking beast. This guy loves Jersey when he played the Devils. He never even stayed in Jersey. Like, no, no, no. Like, this home. guy <laughs> is all over Jersey. I don't get it, boys. I don't get it. But Scott, uh, Scotty, do you think that they have the depth to go? You know, like it's one thing to beat the Rangers, but you know, can they can they make a move here? Yeah, I, I, do, I do think they can because they can skate with anyone and their goaltending has been there all year. And it's, you know, playoff time. It's it's there's usually one team that's going to catch everyone by surprise. There there always is. Well, it happens every year. Well, I'm not. Don't look to me. to well, I told well, you we have a glass. Yeah, we got a glass. I, yeah. We're forgetting about a guy by the name of Igor Shosturkin here, fellas. We're forgetting about the Vezda winner from last year. Now, would you rather have him? I got to look up no. the goal, or or Vanacek for the Devils in a seven game series. Yeah, but uh, listen, we'll uh, see. you know, Sturkin, I'll say it. Yeah, of Atta course. Out of boy. Yeah, yeah, but I think Sorokin's better than both of them. But I, I think there's, there's a lot of listen. The Rangers' power play is deadly. So if you stay out of the box, now I'll, you you got a chance to win, right? If you put those guys on the power play, you're in trouble. Um, Kane, Tarasenko, are they going to get the Rangers to to? Madison Avenue in a parade? I'm not sure. That's, yeah, what do they have left? That's that's the question I would ask. I'm not too. sure. Well, this guy knows more than anyone. He played there, and, and you, the bright lights MSG woke you up because you were fucking a little hot <laughs> cheese. But when they turn those bright lights on in the playoff time, Aves, you don't think Patty Kane's showtime's going to feel a little younger? Tarasenko, the tons of good Russian food in Manhattan. They're going to be like, let's go, baby. Both guys have have proven that they can win. Um, I, I'm not so concerned of that. I'm concerned of how the nucleus is, right? Like you talk about Timo Meyer on the third line. It seems like that's a fit. Where's Tarasenko going to get his minutes? Where's Kane going to get his minutes? How are they going to spread all that? All, uh, that's why when I think about the Islanders, I like these teams that still have that old school identity of like a great top six and a great bottom six because their bottom six are different than their top six. And I think that's how you're going to win. And I don't know if just stack in the deck, which is why Tampa's won the why last Tampa's couple won. of years, right? That's exactly. why they have to be yeah. dealt with again this year. Oh, yeah, and they got the yeah, big guy. I, I agree. Yeah, it's not a fun matchup for anyone. No, no, no. They're going to beat the Leafs. I, I'm and nervous I wanna, to say it. We're going to get to the Leafs because, Aves, I saw your comments. But on the Sorokin thing, Aves, I want to give you some love. I mean, Cons, you at the start of the year, you're like, Sorokin is going to be in the mix for the Vezna, and he has been unbelievable for the Islanders all year. Yeah, and, and he hasn't gotten a, a, enough or a ton of support up front, which, uh, you know, again, injuries are part of the game, but, you know, losing Barzell, Oliver Wallstrom, 30-goal scorer, would have been a 30-goal scorer this year. They they had some some bad injuries, bad injuries on the back end. So they're, you know, but like it's part of the game. 
And all they got to do is get in. And then, you know, from there, we know how it goes. Like Scotty said, there's always one team that comes out of nowhere that'll be somewhere where you would have never thought that you would be having this conversation. Now, can anybody touch Boston? You know, one of the things that that Avery said about we talked about the curse of the President's Cup. And it's like when you win every week, what what's to dial up? Right. Yeah. So it's like if you sneak in, it's like, all right, boys, we're in. Now we got to dial up the intensity on the power play or whatever it is. But when you're essentially perfect over the course of the season, what does Boston have to do to dial it up for the playoffs? Because they've been dialed up. Right. Yeah. What's left for them to do? Yeah. And, and you know, that maybe they're not used to the adversity. I mean, you, you you go through a fucking 63 wins. Like, yeah. how many tight games have you been in, really, over the course yeah. of the season? Um, yeah. yeah. How many I, times know, have you had to tell your teammates, like, hey, fucking pick it up? Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you Come doing? Come on, Ups, get that fucking puck out for me. When you're perfect all year, you've never had any, like, fuck you moments with your guys. Yeah, you guys you got to have some fuck you moments. Yeah. I wonder if they've had a fight in practice this year. I'd say no. Hey, it's funny, Abe's, me and Loops were texting how that Rudy Gobert got fought, like, suspended one game for a practice fight. Hey, uh, Loops is like, good thing they didn't have that back in our day. Hey, Obes, I'm like, I had one practice fight a year. I'm sure you did too, Abe's. Always. I thought practice fights were great. Always. Uh, uh, I used to, Brandon Dubinsky, Doobie, I think me and Doobie always fought once a year, you know? Uh, I'd take a bullet for Doobie. Like, you you need that. Imagine the 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 modern day workplace had the ability to just say, you know what, we're going to have fight club today and, and everyone's going to get their grievances out in the open. Yeah, I would love yeah, that. Let's go. <laughs> I would love that. Would I would love world. that. <laughs> Who would he I grab prefer, in I Vancouver? prefer we don't do that. I prefer we don't do I that. I grabbed fucking, I mean, I grabbed Willie Mitchell one practice because he was going after Mason Raymond. I grabbed yeah. Kessler one day in practice. I grabbed, I mean, Vancouver was easy. Thank had, God I didn't get a full year with you. With you, you would have grabbed me. I would have grabbed you for sure yeah, at one point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you guys would have gone. I grabbed but, Loops in Cincinnati, the American League. The, the, the lockout year, me and Loops hung out every day. It's where we became best buddies. On and off the ice, we went every day. One day, he fucking slashed me in the wrist. I turned around, and I chased him down. And he whacked yeah. me, cross-checked me. It was just how it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Didn't he drop you on your ass in a face-off circle in front of everybody? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. Good memory, Cons. Well, I wonder God, if Prince would be able to find it. So we're playing... We're playing at ACC Aves in Toronto, and we're sticking to the Leafs. This is when the Leafs were shit. And I'm at the faceoff, and I'm fucking around with loops. And I, just before he drops the puck, Aves, you know how you push on a guy's back of his pants? Yeah. And he fucking got me, and down I went, and they didn't drop the puck, and the whole building was like, oh. And I was like, fuck <laughs> off. Like, fuck off, loops, you prick. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hey, friends and family in the building. Friends and friends family. Friends and family. Building. Yeah, I had some stuff lined up after the game. I'm like, come on, Loops, we're better than that here. Aves, right. the, the last thing I want to ask you on the Devils, Rangers, because we, we definitely value your opinion huge on the series. What about experience, man? You know, remember your first playoff series and you two ups. Like, it's a different feeling. And for the New Jersey Devils, I get it. That's why they went out and got Palat. He's got two cups and three finals, and he can say all the right things, Aves. But when shit starts to go sideways and it's Stanley Cup playoffs, I take guys that have been there and done it. Yeah, I uh, my first playoff series. Uh, uh, I remember like clear as day, and uh, so Brendan Shanahan. I played with Shanny, and uh, uh, I think Gomer was our centerman. I I, I can't remember, but uh, game one we beat Atlanta in Atlanta, and Yogs had a big game with Nylander and Straka. Great line, uh, and I was rattled because we didn't step up. You know, we didn't have a great game. We were all off the the score sheet, and at pregame meal the the next day for the for game two, Shanny was like, you know, legs crossed, doing a crossword, sort of like nibbling at his steak. Uh, took a call from from the vineyard, like it was just business <laughs> as usual for this guy. All right, and I'm fucking a, a wreck because I want to go back to New York and I want to win this thing. Like I'm making a statement in New York. And I said to him, dude, are you not fucking nervous? <laughs> and he just kind of looked at me and it was just very simple. He was like, no, I'm not, you know, and yeah. this was a guy that had won three, four Stanley cups and he wasn't nervous. We go out in game two, the first shift, uh, uh, we went a face off. I get a puck at center ice. I dump it in. Like, fucking, I'm dumping this thing as hard as I can. It goes off the partition, banks right into the net. We got an ugly, easy goal right off the bat. And it was just kind of like, so, so yeah, that veteran presence is important. But also don't discount youth because youth 
are fearless yeah. and they don't give a fuck and they don't really know better. Yeah, you know and, what I mean? And, At that point, I'd been in the league six years. I played in L.A. We didn't make the playoffs or whatever it was. Youth is is a beautiful thing. And sometimes and, you got to take that heartbreaking loss to kind of move forward. Right. I mean, I think there's lots of examples where, you know, they could be set for, you know, a game seven heartbreaker. And then they come back next year and with a little playoff experience under their belt, they're only going to get more and more deadly. It's going to be, it's going to really, really, really heat up in the tri-state area. Yeah. yeah. Tough ticket, tough game. ticket, a hey, hot ticket. That's, and that's why there's hot seven ticket. games, right? There's, we're not just this one and done. Fucking yeah, yeah. And sport. Aves, I just want to tag Aves' point about youth. And, and, and listen, boys, I love Jack Hughes. I've taken some heat over this year about the devils. I, I, I've always, I love Jack Hughes. I love his swagger and he may just have enough swag and cockiness Aves that he might just say, this doesn't scare me one bit. I'll go into MSG yeah. and put up, Two and one tonight and get right back on the bus and end of the four, four seasons, you know, or whatever. He's uh, not afraid of the media. No, he is not. I just got goosebumps because that's the, that's dangerous, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's also dangerous if, listen, we don't know how bad the New Jersey Devils want to just fucking stick it to the New York Rangers. Those yeah. guys might be sitting around in that room going, this is all we care about. Like, we don't care what happens. We're fucking beating those guys. Yeah. Those are, that's the Rangers, right? We're the ugly step sister whatever the hell happened so you don't know and if they have that feeling that can be very dangerous very dangerous aves before i get who hated you more islanders fans or devils fans who, who like when you went into which building which building was it, was it the same or who hated you more i mean it had to have been the devils after the marty it had to be you know because we didn't play the islanders ever in the playoffs yeah. Yeah. i think that's the only difference and a well-earned hatred aves by the way yeah. well-earned <laughs> Yeah, uh, but but listen, and I said it on we said it on Quick Shift the other day. Uh, if there's an Islander fan on fire and there's a Devils fan on fire, <laughs> I'm going for the bucket of water for the Islander fan all, all day. I mean, we're still New Yorkers. You yeah. know what I mean? We're still we're both we're New Yorkers. One one day I was at the Coliseum pre <laughs> pre Action Park, and I was with Garth, and it was a uh, uh, an exhibition game, <laughs> and the Islanders. Threw, threw, threw it on the Rangers pretty good in a preseason game. And Garth and I were walking down the hall and Sean popped his hat out of the door. He's like, you getting those rings ready, Garth? <laughs> I'm sizing up those rings. This and that. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And Garth, I was like, what am I? I'm like, he's, he's like, Garth was laughing. He's like, it's pretty funny. No, I'm not firing up the rings yet. No, I'm not. Garth I was like, because Garth's a big dude, you know? Oh, like, yeah, he's a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was... He was pretty amused by it. Neighbors like I don't remember it, but it sounds like something I might have popped my head out the door and said. It's, it's almost like the 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 Rangers. Like we hate the Islanders more than the Islanders hate us, sort of. Yeah, because the Islanders have been more successful, right, over the last right. however many. So they years. have the ability. To they just, got the cups. They're a little more chill. They got the cups. They got the cups. Got the cups. How many? Four. Yeah. In a row. <laughs> 50 Who's years, counting? 50 years, eh, Cons? I see it on the ice every time I see it. There's 50 years. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, Aves, before we get your prediction, I'm going to get you both to pick who wins that series. You, up, you brought up the Brodeur thing was great, but I saw something on social media where you fucking whacked Tim Thomas in the back of the head on a TV timeout. That might have been the greatest thing I've ever seen. And he went straight hammerhead from fucking slap shot and lost his mind. Eh? Yeah. You had never seen that before? I'd never seen it. I'm sure I have. I just didn't remember. It was, it was so good because you're just like, you're not really looking at it. Thomas is there. You're like, ding. And he fucking saw it was you and went bananas. Yeah. Yeah. He, he moved quick. Like yeah. he moved quick on me. He closed distance and he threw that blocker. And, <laughs> you know, I always laugh because I look at those clips and then I see like Freddie Showstrom has to come in and get the shit beat out of him because of me. And then Gomer's like on the peripheral and nobody's going to go at Gomer because if you go at Gomer, then you're going to really start a war. But He's in the shit, right? He's 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 exposed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Tim Thomas. He was yeah, a, yeah. a mouthy little shit bag, right? He won a great goalie. Great goalie. Great goalie. Great goalie. Yeah. Great goalie. I played with him. Yeah, Cons, you were, I don't know if Cons remember this, but I walked in for game seven, Bruins and Canucks at goal with Cons. And Aves, this is when I got traded from the Canucks and they beat us in the second round. So I'm going in to watch this game seven and I'm just praying for Timmy Thomas, bro. I'm like, if the Canucks win a fucking Stanley Cup in front of me here and I'm at goal oh, with Cons yeah. and Timmy Thomas yeah. played an unbelievable game seven. So I, I was so Shout happy. Out to Timmy. Timmy, man. man I, couldn't, Timmy. I couldn't take Kessler and the boys fucking, hurt. I couldn't take it. That would have hurt. <laughs> that would hurt. <laughs> Aves, give me your prediction. If it looks like it's going to be Dave Devils Rangers, uh, I think I know what you're going. Cons, jump in here too. We'll use this for a social. 
What do you got? How many games? Listen. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot, fella. It's going to sound like I'm being a hater, but I, I, I think the Devils are, are just super dangerous, I, and I would not be surprised at all if they made quick work of the ring. I, How I, many I games, Cons? Uh, huh? Devils and what? I'm going to say Devils and six. I say Devils and seven. Wow. You've heard it here. Oh, but my God. That's going to fucking shock share, I might have to share my big Magnum bottle that's of wine with these boys. I'm going to tell you right now. It doesn't make me feel good to say that, but, but uh, it's an exciting game. I respect yeah. the fact that... There's something that weird about the Devils. I, I can't put my finger on it. It could go... If, it, if, if, they, if something clicks, if and they start... I mean, I just... I don't know, man. I wouldn't want to play the Devils. I also time. think, like, Lindy Ruff, man. Fucking old school beauty, right? Like... There's a reason yeah, why is, Lindy is he coaching. He's an old school team. beauty. He, he is. You know what I mean? And and he, there's a difference between him and the rest of those guys, like the Hitchcocks and the the Babcocks and whatever. Like he's still here, right? And and now he's got these young guys. He's probably just letting them. He probably just goes, these fucking kids are. I mean, I don't even yeah. understand them these days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't speak go. their language. What, but guys, what are they guys talking about? Fuck, they're good at hockey. Just go, yeah. boys. Yeah. So yeah, I I can't wait though. It's gonna be great. Um, Abe's another the other, and out of the West, I'm caught. You know, the yeah. Kings are a dark horse in the West. They're they're not going to go quietly. Well, yesterday you were you were picking Edmonton, and no, we were I, like, I, oh, that's a real no, stretch. I, I, what happened that? Well, I'm saying that I think. Well, listen, I think the the I think the West is tighter because it's Colorado. Open. I didn't think much about at all until like two weeks ago. You're like, oh, remember they're the defending champs. They get hot. They anything could happen there. I said that Edmonton has to. I didn't say they will. McGee. Yes, you're right. You're right. For a success for a successful season, Edmonton has to come out of the West. They we, don't even have to win. They just got to get there. We we were talking about like uh, I said my best playoff performance ever was Steve Eiserman in 2002, and Kevin was like, you know, uh, at some Johnny point, Quick 2012. Yeah, fuck, Quick, he was yeah. sick. At, at some point, Connor McDavid's going to have to have that. He has to win, right? So. Is it this year? And I think, and when Kevin said that, I was like, "Yeah, you know what? You're right. Uh, I, I, but they're a great team. They just got to yeah. get there for a Listen, successful it's season. A, if they go a, out in the first round, it's the best depth they've had since oh, since McDavid's been in Oilers. The best depth they have. There's this kid on the back end cons. When you watch the playoffs, his name is Vinny Dernay. He's big number seventy three. He's a throwback. I think he's going to be a big part of the Oilers' playoff success. Cons, I, I, I like LA's forwards. I don't think they're deer good enough. I don't think Sean Walker, Roy, or Mikey Anderson are good enough. And their goaltending is going to be an issue. I think the Oilers take them down, if, in, in my opinion. Drew though. Doughty. Drew yeah, Doughty. Right. I do love Drew Seven D minutes a game. I do love Drew Doughty. <laughs> I do on. love Drew Doughty. <laughs> Fucking lunatic. Yeah. I and mean, as I, mean as a snake. Yeah. I, in I, real life, too. Yeah. yeah. You gotta. You need another You need Scary. another gear to be able to to, to handle uh, McDavid <laughs> and Dreisaitl, though. I mean, yeah. I, listen. I just feel like, you know, Doughty could get, you know, he's a, he's a big-time player, and he's been there. And all those spots, and if, you know, he could get in your way. No, I'm it's, hey, listen, they they're 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 a good they're a good team. They're as good as anyone. They're as good as anyone. Right. I think Corpus Allo should be the starting goalie for Game One for him. We'll see how it goes. Well, that that's the problem. Yeah, fuck you. You know these teams that don't have goaltenders. It's like, uh, what are you gonna do? Really, yeah. honestly, we were also talking how. Toronto? What the, what yeah, I mean, I, Cooper, yeah, we, yeah. we got to get your we got to get your opinion on this, Dave, because we love John Cooper and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Maybe not quite as much as you love the Tampa Bay Lightning. What do you want to say about Kopitar? Say that, he, okay. he, he, I'm serious about this. I okay. think that Kopitar is probably one of the most underrated players in the last 10 years in this league. What this guy does is, is crazy. And if he were anywhere else besides L.A. and, and, and that, that in this market, if he was on Chicago or if he was, you know, in New York, he would be, this guy's got he's statue had a, written all he's over. Had a, when I come to think of it now, he's had a better career than John Tavares. Hell yeah. Well, it's not even close. Way better, that's right? I'm offended. Not, yeah, that's I'm sorry offended to chime in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's got two cups and he was single-handed, yeah. not single-handedly, but well, one of their best forwards, you know, during those runs and still is now. Yeah, yeah. I, he's still I, I would, doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's almost like, and even, you know, we're best buddies with Getzloff too. And, and I look at both those guys playing down south here. Kopitar has had a legendary career. I take yes. Getzlav way he's had, over. Yeah, I know, Kopitar. but it's like, man, the guy. Sean is said that he's earned every dollar he's ever made. Of course, yeah. Kopitar. 
Oh, yeah. I and think he's, Cole done Cole it, he's done it having a nice tan, too. I, I think, live in Manhattan. I think Cole Cole you don't ever hear him in trouble. He's the captain. He keeps yeah. his head down. He goes about his business. He lets his playing do the talking. Yeah. I love Kobe. Yeah. So and I said it. Kobe. You haven't seen him? You never saw him at One Oak back in the day? Or why? He was never just rolling <laughs> no, around but he's, there? He's apparently a member at Mountain Gate. I keep looking for him on the sheet, but he's tough to find during the season. <laughs> I will say this, Cons. I agree with everything you're saying. I think Kopitar deserves to win the Selkie this year. I know everything that's going on with Boston and Bergeron. But I think oh, Kopitar wow. would probably, if I had a vote, which I don't, would win the Selkie. You don't wow. have a vote. Has he had that good of a year? I, in my opinion, I, he's yeah. had that good of a year, yeah. He's yeah, plus, he's plus 20. He's got 27 goals, 45 apples. He's played wow. every game. He's 81 games. Played every game. Wow. And yeah. he's got, he's got, thir- he's got 1,140 points. Yeah, he's wow. talking about leadership in the locker room, talking to the young guys before the playoff game, Kopitar and Dowdy. Yeah. Is he yeah. going to get a statue like Dustin Brown because they hand out statues uh, like they hand out fucking anything? Are you <laughs> kidding me with a Dustin statues. Brown statue? Dude, I love Dustin nice. Brown, but if Dustin Brown gets a statue, then then Kopitar gets a statue, Quick gets a statue, and so does uh Fuck, let's, give, let's get Aves a statue, too. Aves played there. Okay, Aves a statue. Well, give me, yeah, I should get one. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Mike Richards. Yeah. 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 Jeff Mike. Carter. How do you hand out statues that easily? You can't be dishing yeah. out statues like that. I God. You can't and put him. You can't, you can't put Dustin know. Brown beside Magic Johnson just like that, uh, or Kobe. At or a certain whoever's... point, you gotta you gotta slow down on the statues. Yeah. Slow down. They should have held off on the Brown statue. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, agree. Aves. I want to get your opinion on the Leafs Lightning series, fella, because I know how you feel. And I, I thought I saw something on social today, pumping up your cameo, which you are a great cameo, by the way. If anyone was looking to rip their buddies. Yeah. Did I hear you say you like the Leafs? Did I hear that? Fuck he me. wants to like the Leafs. <laughs> yeah. No, we yeah. all do. I think we all deep down want to like them. I mean, we're Canadians. We I like know, to. We I love up, Ryan O'Reilly. We grew up with that, you know, under the tree, O'Reilly. O'Reilly's going to be a difference maker. Um, what they need to do is just say to O'Reilly, listen, we don't care how many points you get. We don't care if you score a goal and assist. All we need you to do is shut down either Cooch or Pointer. Okay? That's... That's job number one. And it's really Cooch. Okay. Cooch, 111 points 11, quietly. 13 points. Of He's so this nasty. kid is a fucking, just a serious player. Okay. Quiet, quiet 111. Again, Toronto's back end, you know, it doesn't really scare me. No, dude. Uh, Aves, who, who, who's going to be the shutdown pair? You're going to play McCabe and Brody against Kucherov? You think Cooch and Stammer and Pointer are going to, oh, not McCabe and They're Brody. Not about oh, that. like, are you kidding me? They're not worried about that. No, no. Uh, and you know, then you go into the depth. Like Corey Perry's going to come up with a big game. Patty Maroon's going to have a big game. Okay, Sorelli's going to have a big game. You know that. Fuck. If Hagel and Paul are hot, this could be a blowout. That's the problem. Like it could be seven, or it could be Tampa and five. If yeah. Tampa really turns it up, and Vasilevsky, don't says, forget about the big fella between yeah, the pipes. The big yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. Aves, I just want to tag that point, Aves. I'm with you. I think it's either if it goes seven, I think Toronto's going to win it. I think if it yeah. goes seven again, they're going to win it at home. And you brought up, brought up our boy, the fact daddy Ryan O'Reilly is going to be huge. But yeah. I could see it being if it goes the other way, it could be short ups. It could be yeah. like Tampa five. You're like, holy fuck, it's over. It's, it's all just how Vassy is to start off. If if they win yeah. the first one, then it's like Toronto's just like, oh god, here we go again. But if they get yeah. on, they if they steal can find- one in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I just, I don't think that the teams, listen, we're in a salary cap era. I, I, you can't build a team and pay two guys 40% of, the, of your salary cap. Like it's just, <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll eat my words with, with dry and McDavid, but, uh, you know, they got a cheap cane. They got a, a, a Nugent Hopkins, like, They've built through the draft, and Toronto doesn't have that depth. So, I listen. I love Shanny. I love Shanny. I, I, you know, I, I do want to say one thing. This is crazy, and I want to talk about this quickly. Okay, this whole, um, this whole Sheldon Keith putting in the backup goaltender, the the emergency goaltender, and then after the game, uh, when asked about the decision, he said, it was not my decision. Word came down to me about 30 seconds before the whistle came and I made it happen. I mean, does that not scare you? What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? Maybe yeah. he got a text from his son and said like, hey, dad, put in that backup goalie or something. <laughs> Did you yeah, yeah. somebody or yeah. Dubis? Dubis or Shan- or I would say that's bad. coming from Shanny before Dubis probably. That might be Shanny texting him. Wouldn't you think? No way. No? I, I, if there's one thing I know for sure, 
Shani would never want that blood on his hands. Okay. I bet we could find out. That's Let's good to know. So then it's but that fucking nerd think, dude. Have you ever heard of that? Like a coach taking a, a call in the earpiece going, hey, switch your goalies. I used to hear in Nashville that Dave Poyle would have a little earpiece to the assistant coach up top, and he would say to the assistant coach to relay stuff to Trotsy about that's certain weird. guys. Yeah. I don't know if that's 100% accurate. Did you ever hear well, that? No, but it was definitely about lineups. Like, before the game, you'd come in after warm-ups, and it would be Poyle telling Trotsy, like, who are the last, you know, who are the bottom four guys are going to be. On. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Are time. you sure? For the first, for, for Trotsy's tenure in Nashville, David Poyle made the lineup, 100%. Yeah. No, Aves, I... What? Yeah. Is I love Barry Trotz, and about halfway through the year, we would come in and you have four four guys on the fourth line. These poor guys would have to go home and eat pregame and nap and come and warm up. And finally, because once I got comfortable, who's gonna yeah, play. finally once I got comfortable with Trotz, I'm like Trotz, you, you can't do this to the boys, man. Like these guys, let them go enjoy their day and let them know they're not playing. Like you got to know who's in the fucking lineup. It's you know, it's enjoy you. their day. Well, they just not, country club, bro. Well, well just don't have to worry about playing. Like you, <laughs> nobody got to enjoy hey, their day. If you're a fat guy like me, Cons, it means it means no pasta. It means yeah, no pasta. No, but Cons, this is salad. Like, I go have a salad. Picture this. Try to get laid the during the day, maybe oh, or something. Yeah, yeah. This well, is listen, you're in town. I'd hate to. You should go check out the museum. Yeah, yeah you should head down. I go. Look, hey, hey, this is like you sitting on set all day, Cons, sitting on set, and then them being like, "Ah, you're not in this one." You know what? It Fuck it. It's happened to me a million times. Yeah, but you'd rather sit at the pool at the, you know. I'd rather, but I'm a professional, and I get paid to be there. And that's just what it goes. I don't feel bad for him. Yeah, cut him loose so we can go to go eat lunch. He, he uh, and maybe get a get in one. No, no not, get, not, not <laughs> get in, get not get in one. one. Go see a movie on the road. You know, maybe you got a friend in the bullpen. There you go. Yeah, you know? see what she's up to. <laughs> come on, bro. You 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 said that to Trotz. Like, come on, let that. I you said, know he's not playing. Let him go. Let him go. Yeah, yeah. I said, listen, like, Trotz. Let's. We need to know our lineup before we leave the rig, so we can come back here and we're fucking ready to rock. Yeah, this, well, this, that's not how it goes, bro. No, it doesn't. Uh, no, it but but I I will say, uh, uh, yeah, it's like me and Tom Hardy rolling <laughs> on the bats at lunch. The director's calling for us. Other, oh, uh, yeah, he wants to roll with Tom Hardy on a movie. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to fly, guys. <laughs> gonna and they're going to say you're not allowed to roll at lunch. Well, if Tom wants to roll, we're rolling. Hey, okay, listen, right. cons. I know all about you know leaving everything you have out in a, in a scene in a TV show I, at the pool. He told me the story, and you, to, to, to cut oh, me yeah, out, Roger. to cut He's me out, I gave you everything I had for for an afternoon at the Roosevelt. I left it all out there, and to get cut by your boy, your Irish brother. I know how it feels. It's not great. Doug hey, cut him. I yeah, did no. they got cut? Did they, did well, they actually, lines? I cut him. Did they have a couple of throwers? <laughs> uh, they were B roll. Right, they were B roll. <laughs> but they, they, they two giant dudes and like tight black t-shirts they just looked out of place how boring is that it was that day guys. No, the that first day, hours but day. when they came to do the movie the movie yeah, we were so- to get in the octagon i was like fellas it's gonna be a long bad time. idea Aves, we've told this story before but you got to hear how how, how how cons broke the news to me so me and loops come up with the roosevelt this is like season seven you know we get cons gives us great scene we got like three or four smoke shows we hit the we hit the beach ball in the pool we're like all right we got it I'm waiting there. I'm, waiting, and then I'm at Collins' house partying one night. He's like, hey, I'm going to tell you, bro. I'm like, what's Something that? He's like, uh, like, Listen, he's like bro, it. it was too long, bro. I had, to, I had to cut you out. I'm like, ah, oh, that's, yeah, fuck, tough. I'm like, <laughs> no, I said you didn't make the cut. And you were like, really? I'm I, like, yeah. And you're like, Collins, question. Where does that, who, who, how does that come down? Who does that come down from? I said, like, I got to be honest. This, this one came down for me. <laughs> me. I go, Collins, who makes that decision? Doug or, you know, I, I got to be honest, Holmes, I made that decision. <laughs> hey, Jim, by the way, I never got the Doug. I never got the Doug. <laughs> you guys were gone before I got uh, the boss. So I know but, the feel of Collins. I know what you mean. I directed the episode and I tried to stick him in and, uh, and they were just, the cam- didn't the camera guy say, aren't you, you guys must be friends with Connolly because we normally have strict instructions to not shoot big dudes. Yeah, yeah, like usually tell us not to shoot dudes. You cut them? Yeah, they, you know. Wow, I, mean, I didn't like, know that. Hey, listen, Barry That's Trotz has up. to do what he's got to do. For, I got to do the, what gives us the best chance to win the game. Well, you're doing the coil in that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's how it looks or not. I got to tell you, so it. we're partying at, at Conscious House that night. I'm like, well, he's like, listen, I got the, what do you call it? I, was it just like the real? Oh, no, that, no, that's what I did. No, because it was a couple weeks later. I waited till I had the outtakes. So I said, listen, you got cut, but for whatever it's worth, here's the Come footage. On, huh? yeah, yeah. So I, said, I got him the footage on the DVD. Do you still have it? Yeah, <laughs> so I slap so me, and, me and Loops are all bagged up. We get back to his house in Newport. I'm like, fire this in the fucking DVD player. Let's see what Collins <laughs> is talking about. So we're like, hey, pull, like put it on. We're like, fuck, I think we look great. I don't know why he cut us out of this one. Just black 
tight black t-shirts and gigantic dudes. <laughs> Ridiculous. Hey, so while on the uh, topic of directing, uh, both of you guys, question for you. What do you rather watch a game on ESPN or TNT? What's been your, uh, what's wrong with them both? What's, what's good about them both? They're both completely different. I, I'm a TNT guy. I, I got to be honest. Yeah, we're TNT guys. Well, let's see what Kevin has. To I mean, I, I like TNT, and strangely, I think Lundquist is great on TNT as well. His podcast is terrible, but his, <laughs> I mean, his podcast is embarrassing. It's, it's early. It's embarrassing. It's but early. his, but him on TNT, he's great. And listen, there's something about when you know, if, no, if Henrik Lundquist is going to talk about goaltending. Okay, sure, right? Well, he would know, you know. So I like TNT, but um. You know, ESPN is ESPN is ESPN. It's and a, I think Biz does a great job too. It, listen, it's a fucking sideshow. Okay. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. And and I love everyone involved. Okay. Like uh I love my captain, Mark Messier. I love uh uh my God, the 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 the, the godfather type for a, a hockey player, Chris Chelios. Yeah. But you put those two guys with PK and it's like it just doesn't really work. It's either the PK show or it's the fucking, well, this is weird because there's like nine cups on that side of the table and, and we're doing fashion segments. And so I think it's very discombobulated over there, but I love everyone. And then you go over to TNT and it's like, uh, well, I, I guess, OB, you got to, uh, you really liked my whole thing about Biz uh, not being allowed to do the playoffs if he's never played a playoff game. I, I <laughs> fucking did see, I did see your social clip on, I saw the clip on Quick Shift and Ames is like, Wait a second here. Has Biz ever played a playoff game? He should be allowed to do a TNT playoff game if he doesn't. And I don't think he has one. I'm 99% sure he doesn't have one. He does. He's played it. He's we, played well, four. We, did, we did it. He played four. He's played four. Played and, four and, oh, but I, I will say, okay, uh, I, was wrong. I played with Anson Carter. Anson's like, I mean, just pick up the pace on something. Oh, right? my God. I'm with I you. I want on you that. to move in a, a yeah. AC. Like, it was great for your game. You were slow. You didn't have a lot of nerves, but we need some action here. Uh, Hank is Hank. Talk about goaltending. Let's do it all day. His podcast is awful. They they need some work over there. <laughs> they they need some help. They need some help over there. I, I just yeah, think the good news is, is that everyone's trying to make moves, right? And at least we're seeing some things. Aves, I want to ask you about Hank's suits. Like, are they like, obviously they're, they're sick. Are they too, like, I, he does a little thing with the top. Like, is that like next too level? Too it's too much. Like, so uh, if, if we're going to compare that to a Richard Gear in um, uh, American Gigolo, you need a little bit more flow, like movement, like more material, like put a pleat in it. If you want to uh, uh, Wall Street, Gordon Gecko. All right. Gordon Gecko and Wall Street, always with the bars and the, but he had some flow to it. Hank looks uncomfortable <laughs> at times. Too like perfect. Too tight. Yeah. You know, too tight. Too you got to let it breathe. God, he's, he's got, trying, a, he's got a nice selection of stuff right. though in the closet. Yeah. Have you ever seen his closet? Like, were you like, you were, you were tight with Hank when you played, obviously, right? A little bit like his closet's got to be just ridiculous. Yeah. So, so many suits. So but, many but suits. you know, he's interesting. He wears like a, a, a Jay, Jay Lindenberg. Lindenberg, he doesn't wear Tom Ford, you know. Shanny's closet, Shanny had six suits, six Tom Ford suits. Two of them were blue, three of them were black, and then maybe he had like a a tan one for the summer in Duxbury. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's all he needed. You imagine Hank packing to go like his oh road trip God. bags were, were, you know, the double fold overs. We used to. <laughs> didn't have the rollers back then the fold over that you carried with the shoulder strap his was like packed to the gills because the guy would wear a new suit every game it's a lot of fucking packing that is this guy had a shoe bag way on the run of the road just for his shoes yeah, this guy, yeah, he he had a, shoe. a like, separate shoe bag this guy's shoe game was tight on the road it was tight i i like that because at least uh yeah it's your feet you want to be comfortable in case you you dress down you dress up yeah, you, you don't, don't want to going on the road you guys loved going on the road, but uh, I, I played in L.A. and New York. I know. I know. Bastard. I know. Fuck. So going on the road was depressing. Yeah. You God. know, I, never, I, was, I wasn't a road warrior. <laughs> no, you saved it. You saved it up for I, I, I wouldn't be a road warrior either if I was playing those two cities. Hey, Aves, question for you. Uh, Bonnaroo in the works maybe for you this year? Or like Saturday yeah. looks pretty damn good this year. Saturday looks great. Yeah, might be a comeback. I'm going to see Fish at the Bowl uh, uh, this weekend. Uh, oh, nice. Our nice. boy Benny McAllister will be there. Yeah, and uh, 
You you guys heard this band Goose? Yet? Yeah, I love Goose the band. Love them. Dude, They're fucking these badass. Kids are on fire. I these know. Kids are on they, fire. They cover some of my favorite songs too, by yeah. the way, like A E I O U by yeah. they're, 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 What a Jam. They're actually they're young, hip, and they have brought back fucking jam yeah. band style. Yeah. Like no one's yes. working. There's a movement happening in yeah. this country and it's a band called Goose. And yeah. these kids are bringing <laughs> happiness back. Yeah. You know. Yeah. bringing like the, the 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 vibes like we need kids being happy having fun together speaking all different colors you know whatever it is uh i don't care who you who you uh mate with who you identify with music is a beautiful thing to bring us all together in those environments we've been in them together we've had some <laughs> some some real doozies in the in the pit you know what i mean are you guys fired up about the festival uh yeah open festival season? like season's coming around yeah, college we've... you going to coachella college or what should i meet you there but or what i'm kidding that's it those that ship is sailed bro. yeah that ship yeah is sailed. yeah you never cool. know, though you get that call at like it would have to be a perfect alignment of, of and it's like the hey stars would have to line up really nice. the tahos are leaving we're going we're we're bombing down Aves, a, i gotta Aves, i gotta tell you how good of a team guy kevin connelly is right so this is coachella i got me loops mac l and we got a good crew we got lots of good looking girls and we're at this party and this is this is lupal right out of toronto where he thinks when he shows up to a party the fucking gate should open up and he should just roll right in right he's like <laughs> we're fucking out of here i'm like you just sit tight we're not fucking leaving look at this party there's fucking chicks everywhere so i call cons once nothing fire him a text Go two more. Anyways, call him. I'm like, Fala, I'm out. He's like, you got girls? I'm like, trust me, I got girls. I just need your leadership out here. He's like, I'm coming. <laughs> it was... It was a par five and then some. It was eight hundred yards. It was a it was a half mile walk. It was a dude. half mile walk, and we're sitting there. And I said, "Trust me, he's coming. Don't worry, he's coming." And then I see the fucking e sig, <laughs> and there he come. Like we're in, we're fucking in, <laughs> and he comes and grabs us and takes us in. Hey, Collins, that was that was my last Coachella. That was it. That was a good one. But yeah, then all of a sudden you got four dudes <laughs> up against the gate. Four Black dudes t-shirts, absolutely pinned. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely he pinned at the gate but you did you had you had girls with you so it's soft from the blow but it's like yeah can you get soft. eight people in i was like ah it's tough man eight is tough my first coachella i think uh well i no i don't think i know i i've been told i don't know apparently i didn't know who phil anschutz was who was the guy that owned our team the la kings who also owns coachella because he owns aeg and everything associated with it and apparently i like took his spot on the stage and I wasn't prepared to give the spot up. Like there was a little bit of a thing that I was told about after the festival, <laughs> like, like the Thursday after I got a call saying, uh, Hey, we'd like to Dave Taylor, like Dave Taylor, Dave Taylor. That's why you're banned from every show by Los Angeles. Dave called me to let me know. Uh, he was like, yeah, you know, you guys ever meet Dave Taylor? Yeah. Yeah. No, he was in St. Guy. Louis. He, he was assistant like to the GM in St. Louis for a bit. Nice but, guy. Yeah. Nice yeah. guy. Yeah. You know that Sean is banned from uh, every sheet of ice in California. <laughs> I believe the band. Well, hey, fuck it. I threw my skates. I, I, I re-threw my skates into into the Hudson. Oh, you got rid of them. Well, uh, I'm a martial artist. So. <laughs> He's <a fun> <laughs> Boys, uh, we could do this all day with you guys. Um, thank you so much, Aves Cons. Let's let's get uh, let's get this going throughout the playoffs. But that that was some great stuff. So thanks for taking the time out of your day, boys. Yeah, uh, let's enjoy the the run together, uh, cross pollinate. Uh, uh, the, it's a beautiful game. Yeah, let's. They, it's going to be. Let's touch base after the Rangers Devils series. Maybe yeah, we come I want to bet you guys, Collins. What do you want to bet? I want to Collins. I'm going to bet you a bottle of Blue Label that the Rangers win. Deal. Sure. Oh, okay. hey, let's let's uh, let's hum up the 405 and catch a game up at Action Park and yeah. do some stuff yeah, up there. Yeah, I love that. Do a, yeah. yeah. Fun spot to catch a game. Yeah, yeah. we'll do that. Yeah, get this guy a beer. I'll get you a beer. <laughs> <laughs>